Hey everybody, this is Cholera, and welcome to another single commentary. I know you guys have been missing my commentaries. I've been doing a lot of recent commentaries with uh, all sorts of people on Vile Attack, but um, I'm going to be going back here with a historical commentary. This is Savior vs. I Love UV from the Scion MSL, played in January of 2006. And uh, shout out to Team Liquid, by the way. I downloaded uh, these VODs from teamliquid.com's uh, VOD torrents, you can find them, and they're a great source of high quality VODs. This was actually from a program that had a collection of Savior, Maja Yoon's best games uh, that was played recently on NBC, the channel NBC. And um, basically I just went through it and uh, found at least one game I want to commentate. This is a fairly long game that was played on Ride of Valkyries, and here it is, I Love UV back in January of 2006. And uh, I Love Uvi at that point had won at least, I think he had won uh, three MSLs before that. He was already a three-time MSL champion, I believe a two-time OSL champion. So, I mean, obviously Savior is playing uh, someone who is top-notch here um, in like, I Love Uvi. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's not much to say. Savior at this point had one MSL title under his belt, the uh, Uzo MSL. Uh, where he beat Reach, the Mantos, yes, Mantos was uh, busy in 2005 um, fighting in uh, Iraq, and uh, Savior, of course, uh, managed to beat him in StarCraft while Reach was, you know, busy, busy saving lives. But uh, anyway, uh, that was Savior's one victory so far, and uh, he was looking like a very promising player. Now look at this, I love Uvi already in the beginning going for an 8 racks. this is Ride of Valkyries, a uh, two-player map, and... Um, you know, has a lot of high grounds in the middle and two expansions in the corners, uh, but we might not even get to see that. Of course, I know we are going to see that, but uh, we're going to see a barracks first, so uh, this is definitely a rush here from UV. And uh, meanwhile, Savior might be going for his fast expanse, so he might be in trouble here. This is a two player map, and uh, if he goes for a 12 hatch, he is uh, in danger of this very fast rush here. And the distances on this map are not very far from one another. So we'll see if Savior puts a scout out or if he goes 12 pool. And it looks like he might go 12 pool, so he'll be fine then. If he does plant there, I'm not sure uh, if he'll plant or not. Savior at that point was already a sensation, of course. Um, this is, uh, you know, back then he wasn't necessarily on top of the world, but uh, after, you know, after this series and a couple of other series in 2006, he was undoubtedly the best player from 2006 all the way uh, to the middle of 2007. Um, and it looks like he has gone for a 12 pool, so this is going to be a great counter against the uh, 8 racks of UV. Uh, I guess we'll call him U from now on. Nice little uh, picture of Savior. He looked so young back then. Just look at him. And uh, here he goes, planting in hatchery at 11, most likely. And uh, we're seeing the first Marine and ASCV. We're gonna see the uh, we're gonna see the bunker rush anyway. So Uv wants to go for it. He knows he wants to do some damage here uh, because the 12 ra 12 pool is pretty good. And <laughs> look at Maje Yoon. Look at Saver. He doesn't even care. He's not even breathing hard. He's like, all right, you're gonna you're gonna bunker rush me. Uh, I am Savior. I am Maje Yoon. And I'm going to try to kill off this SCV. Oh, looks like the SCV builds the bunker. So already Savior could be in trouble. I thought he was going to bring more drones out and try to intercept the uh, Marine or kill off the drone. But it looks like he's going to wait until he gets the Zerglings out. And uh, meanwhile, that one Marine is going to do some damage to Hatchery. The Hatchery has a lot of hit points. Though. So Savior, uh, we'll see if he decides to build Lings and try to kill off the bunker that way. Or if he puts down a sunken colony. And no, he is going to go around. So he mined out the... Uh, one of the mineral patches that leads to another exit from his natural expansion. I don't know if Uv saw those Zerglings, but no, he has seen them. Okay, now he knows they're coming, but he doesn't care. I mean, he can take if he can take down the hatchery, it doesn't matter. It looks like Savior is just setting up for a surround. I thought he was going to go for an attack on the main, but Uv has two uh, SCVs ready, and Savior could be in trouble right now. Looks like Savior loses a drone, a little bit careless. Okay, now he's going in. Uh, six uh, Zerglings. Um, Uv needs to repair here. Meanwhile, the hatchery goes up fully. Uh, Savior... Bring his drones out. I think they're going to be able to take down this bunker, though. It looks like the bunker goes down. The bunker goes down at the loss of two drones from Savior. Nice work. And you hear clapping in the background. I don't know if you guys heard that uh, over my shouting, but there was definitely some applause even. Uh, I think possibly from the announcers, because that was very, very impressive there. Great surround. And Savior now has an early lead here. Um, he managed to get his hatchery up uh, without getting it killed off, obviously, and uh, lost only two drones in the process. Uh, I think he has probably even numbers of workers with Uv, and of course he's up in expansion and up a hatch. So, uh, decent position for Savior opening this game here. Good defense. And meanwhile, Uv is going to go for a wall in, and now an expansion. So he's going um, uh, one racks into expansion, and uh, he's floated the forward racks back into position, of course, to create the wall in. 
And we'll see if he goes for an early gas. He does go for an early gas, so most likely going to get that early academy and try to put more pressure on Savior. Meanwhile, we'll see if Savior plants a third hatch or not. By the way, at this point in the game, Savior was uh, busy just making three hatch mulesks the standard Tyrant versus Zurg build. Um, basically, previous to that, we'd see a lot of two hatch builds or all sorts of you know weird kind of th three hatch builds or three hatch lurkers, but Savior basically mastered um, three hatch mulesks into lurkers and then getting his third gas uh, at the moment when his Mulus came out. And we'll see if that's the timing he has on this map. Of course, he has been harassed early on, so the timing might be different. Uh, but basically, the Savior build, which, um, you know, is, is really still very, very good. Not necessarily in the pro levels because of, you know, slight changes that have been made on the Terran game, and certainly, of course, because mech builds have been so much more common. But uh, overall, in the amateur level, it is still a very, very good build. Um, you know, and this is, you know, for the noobs out there listening, but uh, it's basically three hatchery into lair. Um, 12 hatch, usually, and then uh, you get your Spire down, and when your Spire is finished, you have a drone ready to pick up your uh, your third expansion, I'm sorry, your second expansion, usually a gas expansion, and you produce nine Mutalisks, and then you also plant a Hydralisk den, and uh, you research Lurkers immediately afterwards. So you just build nine Mutalisks, they're there to harass and gain some map control, and then you go for a Lurker Mutalisk uh, Zergling strategy. And uh, afterwards, Savior would usually, if he managed to hell this third gas, uh, go quickly to Lair and get Defilers out. And that was something else he revolutionized in Zerg versus Terran play. He definitely revolutionized the use of Defilers and Dark Swarm. So we're seeing the Lair now from Savior. He's got his uh, spawning pool in the right position there to mine gas more efficiently. And meanwhile, we've got a nice attack force here from Ilo Vu V. He's going to go for an early push, um, and it's going to help him secure his uh, expansion also. But he only has one barracks, and uh, he wants to do some damage here. And Savior, of course, uh, definitely relied on sunken colonies rather than mass zerglings, in, usually, uh, to defend against his timing push from a, uh, a two-base Terran. And he would uh, usually get up to three, usually the standard was three sunken colonies before his uh, Mulusks came out. And meanwhile, Savior has gotten a lucky Zergling through there. Very smart scouting by Savior. This is, oh my goodness, but Savior is going to be going for Lurker first, it seems. But no, it doesn't actually make sense. Uh, the Lurkers, if he was really going for Lurkers, he would have gotten that den out, I think, before the lair completed. So I'm interested in seeing what he's doing exactly. I would think at least he would be doing that if he was going three hatch Lurkers. Um, but, you know, it could just be a later three hatch Lurkers. Uh, it doesn't look like we have a spire anywhere, so it is going to be it is going to be lurkers. Interesting, definitely a deviation from the savior build. Um, I'm not sure if at that point he had actually uh, perfected it yet. To be honest, uh, I know that later against Nada, for example, in their OSL series, you can check that out much much earlier in my account. It's one of the first videos I did, but he was definitely using that build very often. But maybe he wants to change it up also. Anyway, three sunkens up here and uh, three fire bats out for Oov. I'm not sure uh, what he hopes to accomplish without medics. Uh, to, to, more Marines, rather, to come through. And, oh, Savior trying to go for a run in here. He is going to get four Zerglings through. This is the kind of stuff that Savior is famous for. He's going to try to do some disruption now inside of Ooh's base, catching the SCV, building the factory. And he can catch a couple more SCVs in the main here. And, uh, really, he wants to hurt the macro of Oov as much as possible. Of course, uh, Oov, obviously, I've been talking all about Savior, but Oov, obviously, is a great player also. Uh, really, you know, one of the most... One of the most successful pro gamers out there. I would definitely say in the top five, if not the top three of all pro gamers, but there are a lot of great programmers out now. And we are seeing